So, boxes of stones. Medium, small, large. And what are they? They're from the tank. So I'm just cleaning out the tank. See, this is the baskets that go into the tank. This is the pump I was using. If we go in here, it's not too dark. You see the tank. Now you can see that I've taken out most of it. That's the well. That's part of the under gravel field. So the other half is outside. And you'll see that the pump sucks all from underneath it, so it pulls all the dirt to the bottom, which gets filtered through the gravel first. Then it goes through a whole system there, which is uh, various medias. There's uh, like a fibrous filter, and there's charcoal. Quite a bit of charcoal in there, and a few other bits and bobs like ceramic rings, that kind of thing. And then it gets pumped back into the tank, nice and clean. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see, the water's quite dirty down. That's the grime that builds up. Now, normally you can do leave this for a couple of years when you're putting a lot of lobsters in it. Uh, I'm doing it this year and I clear it out once. If I can do it each year, I try to do it each year. And I'm going to refill it with water. And I've kept one of these with some water in just to get the bacteria back into it again. But uh, it's looking right. There's a little bit of peeling. I don't know if you can see there. I went over it a while back, the whole thing, and some areas obviously done, didn't key it properly. Uh, it's just flaked a bit, but it's nothing to worry about. So we'll take we'll take a look at this in stages anyway. It's just something I decided to quickly video because I was asked a few times about the tank. So just well film it while it's being sort of dismantled you might say or taken apart and then when I refill it we'll look at it as, I, as we go through it so there you have it the tank's completely empty now you'll see that there's a under gravel filter there. there's another one there now this one here goes to this big pump here and it basically pulls the water down what I'll do is I'll put large stones down there first on the base and then what we'll do is put some medium ones and then some gravel on top and that acts as an under gravel filter so this will suck the water through the gravel pulling any dirt to the bottom and you'll set up a sort of biological system where it goes into the gravel then the water will carry it through to this filter which then will pick up any you've got charcoals and things in there which will pick out anything nasty if there is anything nasty ever turns up in the water and it basically works like that and that one over there is just basically for if you stick an air stone in that one with a pump, it'll do pretty much the same thing. It'll aerate the water at the same time. It just adds a bit of aeration. Um, obviously when the waters, if they get warmer, they don't hold as much oxygen. So I try to keep the temperatures down with um, the tank. I don't really want them over 20. Uh, below 18 is where I try to keep it. Uh, 20 is like the critical point. If it hits that, then I've got to really start acting and getting the temperature down because things will die if the water gets too warm and the quickest way to get the temperatures or sort them out is this coke bottle just literally fill it with water shove it in the freezer and I've got a big freezer in here which is over there which keeps bait and keeps a load of these bottles full of water in the summer so I can keep the water chilled you can get a chilling unit of some description if you want you can run a you can run a pipe through something like this like a fridge um, but the bottles seem to work fine as long as I come in each morning and put a couple of bottles in each day what you'll find is you can keep your temperature down even if the temperature comes up it takes a long time for this water to heat the trouble you run into is if you let your water get too warm and then trying to get the temperature back down again so it's always better like I say to, to have the temperature down ideal water temperature is probably about 12 to 15 degrees I'd say but I say in the summer it does go up to sort of, well I normally am able to hold it around the 16 mark, 17 mark kind of sort of comfortably, it's just when we get very warm spells of weather I have to be a little bit more observant with it but all I've got to do now is fill up these rocks again put the small ones in and then uh, fill it with water, I've already started collecting some water which is in these big canisters here and then we'll be good to go again Well, that's the first layer of stones and rocks in. Now, to put the gravel in. There we go. Final layers in. 
see that side's a bit ripply which is quite good it gives it like a rock effect quite like that anyway um, what's next is I'll be putting the water into it and then I'll be putting in there some water in this tank here which I saved from the old water that'll contain the bacteria to get this water started quicker because if you start with everything fresh everything clean you've got to wait for the bacteria to build up the good bacteria which will break down any bits and pieces that end up in the water so we want to get that started straight away um, so we'll get the water in as much as we can uh, the pump won't go on today because the pump needs to get that charcoal I'm just waiting for that and um, yeah things should be good after that and then after that once the the baskets go back in now you may be wondering why do I put them in baskets and not just put them straight in the tank well lobsters love to dig and even these big stones you've seen me put in the bottom lobsters will move those uh, we had one in here ages ago it changed it should we actually hatched a load of young lobsters in the tank and released them back into the wild later on and like separated them and put them back in the wild but she was digging all the time she was pushing this ground up and exposing the filter at the bottom and that and it was a pain in the ass plus having them in the baskets I can keep them sort of separated their sizes that kind of thing and you keep the big lobster away from the small lobster so anyway we'll get the water in then I've just got to keep an eye on the pH for the next few days so we have things like this this is a hydrometer for the salt and then we've got some digital I've got two of these different ones um, to keep an eye on the pH, we want to keep that pH just about right. Lobsters are fairly tolerant of changing water conditions, and there'll be prawns in there as well that help to keep the little bits, they pick up all the little bits from the lobsters. They actually come into the lobster tanks and clean them, so we'll have some of those in there as well. And um, yeah, they're fairly tolerant, lobsters and prawns, of changing water. If you were to keep fish in here, you'd have to keep a really, really good check on your conditions. I have had fish in here at one point, we put some, uh, what do you call them, oh, I can't even think of their name, smelt. Well, we call them rosely over here. I put a few in here just as was keeping some for bait. I even put a few sand in here once that works as well, but sand are very hard to keep. And when they die they can mess your water up, so that's why there's never any fish in here, it's just lobsters and prawns usually. Right, let me get this water back in. So what you see in front of you is the filter for the tank, the lobster tank. So today my carbon arrived, activated carbon pellets, that's to remove any sort of toxins that may end, end up in the water, which hopefully we won't get, and some filter wool, which is just basically wool, which acts as a filter, picks up any big bits. So, this is the pump, I'm going to pull it apart. It's just literally held down by these four. Like that. This comes off. This is the main pump part. Now it's going to be absolutely filthy because when I entered the tank out, I used this pump to pump most of the water out so it would have picked up loads of the crap that I stirred up in the water and it would have ended up in here so you've got like a little basket on top there then what you've got if I can find I think they just slot in actually yeah like that so we'll take that out that's the charcoal they're in bags these things here um, I've probably changed that around I had a couple of small ones and a large one I picked up last time so I can either refill those or I'll fill up another net well we can just put that on the side and then next one filter very dirty filter and then the final one is full of these little balls now these collect all the back the good bacteria and they break down bits and pieces that get caught up in the filter so um, well, we're gonna basically clean it all out and start from scratch again and that's what sits at the bottom and then you've just got a whole load of dirty water in here which is like mud tip that up. that's pretty much it like I say we'll put new wool in here this is like the walls under this sort of filter but we'll get rid of that we don't need that now 
chuck all of that out, that will get dumped, all of that. You can see it's just a pile of muck, basically. But that is because, like I say, it was pumping all the crap out when I cleaned the whole thing out, so. And we'll get all this cleaned up, all back together, with all the new media in, and then we'll uh, put it back in the tank. Well, you can see it's a nice day. Unfortunately, it's a bit too windy for any fishing. But uh, getting all the ropes ready, go on to the pots over there. And then the boat will be going down in a couple of days. But anyway, see here we've got the tank ready. Now, I do need to get still some more water. You can see how long the clean that is. And the pump's working again. So I'm just going to pick up, pick up some more water. Filter's back in place. Running. I seem to be getting a slight weak around the, there, but it'll probably seal itself up. There's a bit of salt builds up around it. What I'm going to do now is get some lobsters.